Welcome back to the 101 series, where we're going to be talking about some of the most salient ophthalmology problems that you'll come across in the exam. Specifically of this video, we're going to cover two common presentations that can be emergencies, the acute red eye or a sudden loss of vision. Some of the other ocular pathologies like glaucoma, cataract and diabetic retinopathy will be covered in other videos. So let's start with the acute red eye. This is an important pathology not to miss, simply because of some of the more urgent differentials. Simply put, in primary care it's worth noting and being comfortable with in which cases to be seen as an emergency by the eye clinic versus ones we can deal with in primary care. So let's run through some of the differentials. Anterior uveitis. Consider this in patients with connected tissue or rheumatological disorders where the presentation is usually a relatively acute blurry vision and intolerance to light. And classically, the patients will have an oval pupil with ciliary flush. This is classically related to ankylosing spondylitis, reactive arthritis, and even inflammatory bowel disease. There is sometimes a hypopion, which is essentially pus in the anterior chamber of the eye, and thus a fluid level sometimes seen. This will need an urgent eye review. Acute closed angle glaucoma. Now, I'm going to produce a longer video of this specifically, but an acute glaucoma is where essentially there's a semi-dilated pupil with a hazy cornea simply because of an increased intraocular pressure. Patients often complain of a significant headache with a reduced acuity and halos in the vision, but I'll put the link of the video down below. Scleritis. Again, consider this in patients with rheumatological disorders or inflammatory bowel disease where there's painful eye movement. This is in contrast to episcleritis where, again, it's a relatively common manifestation of rheumatological disorders and extraintestinal manifestation of IOD, but it's painless unlike scleritis. Conjunctivitis can be split simply into bacterial, viral or allergic, depending on the etiology and presentation. Usually, purulent unilateral discharge with some systemic effects may suggest a bacterial infection, whereas those with itching or atopic symptoms may suggest allergic. Subconjunctival hemorrhages are common, particularly in those with hypertension, or with trauma, or with those with coughing and sneezing bouts. Foreign bodies. This is often followed as a history of drilling or hammering, or the use of relatively sharp objects or trauma. Understandably, there will be a painful red eye with a sense of grittiness or foreign body in the eye, and this is usually dealt with by the urgent eye clinic. Keratitis essentially refers to an infection or inflammation of the cornea, with treatment dependent on the causative agent. Bacterial causes, usually either a staphylococcus or pseudomonas agents, particularly in contact lens wearing patients, are relatively common. However, you can get fungal, parasitic, and amoebic causes as well. Herpes simplex keratitis or dendritic ulcers are however more common in examinations, with a slit lapping examination and fluorescent usage classically giving a green uptake, a hallmark of this condition, with treatment revolving around antivirals in the urgent eye clinic. Now that we've covered the red eye, what about going through the differentials of when a patient has sudden loss of vision? Well, let's start with amaurosis fugax, which is often considered a transient ischemic attack where there, for whatever reason, is a transient loss of blood supply to the ocular arteries and should be treated with 300 mg of aspirin with urgent eye assessment. Most patients, however, describe it as a black curtain drawing down over their eye. Central retinal vein occlusion most commonly occurs in those with hypertension and glaucoma, but can be seen in polycythemic patients as well, with a florid display of retinal hemorrhages on fundoscopic examination. This is a relatively common cause, typically seen with increasing age. However, central retinal artery occlusions classically see as cherry red spot on fundoscopic examination, and this is a common exam feature. Patients often present with a relative afferent pupillary defect, with most common etiology because of thromboembolic nature. However, this can be seen as a complication of temporal arteritis, and those patients often need an urgent eye review. Retinal detachments are often predisposed by vitreous hemorrhages, where patients often complain of a shadow-like shape floating towards the centre of their vision, with a sensation of curvy lines and central vision disparity. Patients also have some floaters or some dark spots at the onset of their presentation, with age being a key factor. Other causes of retinal detachment include diabetes, in which there's scar tissue pulling away at the retina from the back of the eye, or when there's excessive exudate from underneath the retina from inflammation, commonly seen in trauma or inflammatory disorders. Vitreous hemorrhages, as mentioned, these patients may lead on to retinal detachment, with patients often complaining of dark spots and floaters, and again, it's commonly seen in diabetic patients or those with clotting irregularities. So, that's a wrap. I hope you found this 101 useful, where we've covered some big topics in ophthalmology. As usual, go in and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and leave a comment if you like the video. 
Check out our Instagram page as well, where we've got some amazing bite-sized revision content for all of your exams. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.